Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. There are a couple of nice number theory questions on the University of Oxford's mathematics admissions test. Importantly for this test, calculators are not permitted. Here is one question. Exactly one of the five choices below is a square number. Which one? One choice is 99,999,999. Then we have 123,333,333. Option C, 649,485,225. Option D is 713,291,035. And option E is 987,645,000. So which choice is the perfect square? This question is not testing your trivia knowledge of perfect squares. It's not testing whether you can extract a square root. This question is actually testing your knowledge of number theory. The way to solve it is by using the process of elimination. If you can say which numbers are not square numbers, then you will be left with the option that is a square number. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. So let's look through each of the options. Let's start with the first number. Answer choice A is one less than 100 million. 100 million has eight zeros, so it is equal to 10 to the power of eight. But 10 to the power of eight is a perfect square because this is the square of 10 to the power of four. So option A will be one less than a perfect square. It'll be n squared minus one. So since we are one less than a perfect square for a very large number, this option itself will not be a perfect square. We can eliminate answer choice A. Let's now consider answer choice B. To analyze this number, look at the very last digit, which is the digit three. Is it possible for a perfect square to end in the digit three? Let's consider the squares of the numbers going from zero to nine. Zero squared is zero, one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared is 25, six squared is 36, seven squared is 49, eight squared is 64, and nine squared is 81. We can take a look at the very last digit of each of these, and we see that none of them end in a three. If you are a perfect square, you cannot have the last digit be equal to three. So we know that option B is also not a perfect square. Let's now go to the very last option choice, which is option E. Notice this number ends in three zeros. This means option E can be written as 987654 multiplied by 1000. 1000 is equal to 10 to the power of 3. The prime factorization of 10 is 2 multiplied by 5. We can then distribute the exponent, so we have 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 5 to the power of 3. Notice that 5 does not divide 987654 because this number doesn't end in a 0 or a 5. So the prime factorization of option E will have five raised to the third power. But every perfect square must have every prime factor raised to an even power. This option has five raised to an odd power, which is three. So option E cannot be a perfect square. So we will eliminate this option. Now let's consider option D. The last two digits of this number are 35. What can we say about this number? Well, we know the very last digit is a five, so it must be divisible by five. We have some factor of five in the prime factorization. If this is a perfect square, we must have five to some even power. Now five squared is equal to 25, so we know that if this is a perfect square, it must be divisible by five squared, which equals 25. So let's look at multiples of 25. We have 25, 50, 75, 100, and we have 125, 150, 175, 200, and so on. The pattern will continue. The last two digits will always be 25, 50, 75, 
or 0, 0. So we have option D is divisible by 5, but it is not divisible by 5 squared, which is 25. So we can't have this as a perfect square. We know that D is not a perfect square. So that leaves us only with answer choice C, and by the process of elimination, this must be the perfect square. Option C is a square number. And that's the answer. Now I want to present another interesting question. Let alpha be equal to log base 10 of 2, beta be equal to log base 10 of 3, and gamma be equal to log base 10 of 7. Which choice is closest to an integer? Answer choice A is 2 beta. Answer choice B is 5 alpha plus beta. Answer choice C is alpha plus 2 gamma. Answer choice D is 2 alpha plus 5 beta. And answer choice E is 2 alpha plus beta plus gamma. You're given a hint that 2 squared times 3 to the power of 5 is equal to 9.72 times 10 squared. So at first, it isn't obvious how to solve this question to me at all. So I would just start by calculating each of the answer choices in terms of logarithms. Let's just ignore the hint for a moment and focus on answer choice A. So 2 beta is equal to 2 multiplied by log base 10 of 3. We can use the rules of logarithms to get that this is equal to log base 10 of 3 squared, and 3 squared is equal to 9. So answer choice A is equal to log base 10 of 9. Now let's consider answer choice B. We have 5 alpha plus beta. We just substitute in for alpha and beta. We can now use the rules of logarithms to simplify. So the first term is equal to log base 10 of 2 to the power of 5. 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32. We are now summing two different logarithms with the same base of 10. So this will be equal to log base 10 of the product of 32 and 3. 32 times 3 is equal to 96. Now where do we go from here? Well, we can rewrite this. 96 is equal to 10 multiplied by 9.6. We can now split this up into a sum. Log base 10 of 10 is equal to 1. So the final result is 1 plus log base 10 of 9.6. That is answer choice B. Let's do the same thing for answer choice C. We can substitute in for alpha and gamma. We can then use the rules of the logarithms. So we'll bring this exponent up, then 7 squared is 49. We can now bring this into one term of log base 10 of 2 multiplied by 49. This is log base 10 of 98, and we use the same trick as before, and we'll split this up. So 98 is 10 multiplied by 9.8. We break this up and log base 10 of 10 is equal to one. So this simplifies to be one plus log base 10 of 9.8. That's answer choice C. We'll go ahead to answer choice D. We substitute in for alpha and beta. As before, we use the rules of logarithms. So let's bring up these coefficients to be exponents. And now let's take this sum and turn it into a product of the arguments. We now have 2 squared multiplied by 3 to the power of 5, which I don't know offhand, but we now bring up the hint that 2 squared multiplied by 3 to the power of 5 is equal to 9.72 times 10 squared. So we can substitute this in, and we can then break this apart. Now we have log base 10 of 10 squared, which is equal to 2. So this all simplifies to be 2 plus log base 10 of 9.72. Let's now simplify the final answer choice of E. Substitute in for alpha, beta, and gamma. Let's bring up this exponent and bring this all together by multiplying the arguments. We then have 2 squared times 3 times 7, which works out to be 84. We can break this up using the trick from before, and this will all work out to be 1 plus log base 10 of 8.4. So we have our answer choices in some sort of standard form. Now, which choice is closest to an integer? In order to figure that out, we just need to focus on the fractional parts or the decimal parts. We can ignore any of the whole number parts of the answer. So all of the fractional parts 
will just be a single standard form. Every single one of the fractional parts will be log base 10 of n for some number n. Now we know that log base 10 of 10 is equal to 1. So all we need to do is choose the value of n that is closest to 10, and that will be the choice that's closest to an integer. In this case, we have 9, 9.6, 9.8, 9.72, and 8.4. And clearly, 9.8 is closest to 10. Therefore, answer choice C will be the closest to an integer. And that's the answer. What an interesting question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.